today we're talking top hats and liners. Ian, yes, Steve. I think you've misread the script. Again? Again. Okay. I think you mean this. Ah. Top hat liners, yeah? Top hat liners. Just roll the splash screen. Cracking blocks then. So here we've got a Rover V8 engine that's been sectioned through along both banks. If I rotate this, we'll see the waterways. It's the front of the block here. Cylinder two waterway, four waterway, six waterway, and of course eight, and then our main water jacket at the back. Um, I've just asked Steve to splice this picture in here because what I forgot to show you before I rotated the block round was the machining marks, uh, which you can now see with the red arrows on them. Uh, as you'll notice at the lower side of the picture where the blue arrows are, there are no machining marks. Now this again goes to show that the block was cast off centre or off, uh, off to one side, offset. Now the machining marks you're looking at are the milling tool that comes down and takes the material out for the tappet hole. And it's quite obvious that if the block was cast perfectly, there wouldn't be any because it would be engineered not to uh, have these marks on the inner of the valley and uh, if it was cast oversized, undersized or anything like that it would be on both sides so you can see it's not central because this is just on one side which adds to all of the issues we're showing you here. Okay so this is where our liner sits and our pistons going up and down and there of course but we're talking about the waterways or water jackets so if you can zoom in over here please Steve. There's a button for that. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, so you can see this water jacket sat nice and centrally and we've got uh, an even wall thickness of about 3.3 millimetres either side. Panning to the left, nicely done. Uh, we've got the water jacket now slightly offset to the right and we're seeing a reduced material thickness here going down to about 2.5 millimetres which obviously means we're increased here to about 4.2. And coming on to the last water jacket that sits between two cylinders on this uh, block we are seeing a reduced wall thickness down to two millimetres here. So on this block, if we would see a crack develop, uh, I would expect to see it developing around here. We've actually now managed to video a crack in a block, which uh, Steve can splice in now, I believe. What we're looking at here is the actual crack that's in the alley block, so the steel liners have been bored out. And what you're looking at here is a uh, theory liquid sprayed over the crack. We've pressurised the waterways and you can see it bubbling up. So this is a block that will not be reconditioned by us. It's not usable. So uh, it will probably get turned into a coffee table. OK, so uh, there's three different style of liners and people always say, oh, my liner has cracked in my engine. Whereas, as we've already shown you, it's the actual alley block that cracks behind the liner. So we've got a standard liner, a top hat liner and a ductile liner, which Steve's going to make magically appear in a second. Standard liner, uh, as used in most conventional engines, and of course, if the block cracks behind this, the water hits the back of this, and there's two ways it can go. It can make a path up to the top and puncture through the head gasket, or it can go down and into the oil. Obviously, most common way is it, it travels up with heat and uh, punctures through the head gasket, which is why sometimes if people replace the head gaskets, you might get another day or two or a couple of weeks uh, because you've resealed this, this top hair. Moving on to the ductile liner, which Steve, I think you can put a picture in now, can't you? I think so. Okay, um, so it should now be here. Um, now ductile liners, we don't use them. There's absolutely no need for them whatsoever in a Rover V8 engine. A ductile liner simply has three times the tensile strength of a normal liner. Now, there's no problem with the strength of the liner, none at all. Uh, you might use these in some other scenarios like forced induction cars, maybe a wet lined engine where the, where the liner isn't supported. So that's ductile liners. So again, if, if you've got a Rover V8 engine that's had ductile liners installed to cure a cracking issue, it's not going to make a difference to it. Now the top hat liner, which a ductile liner might have as well, it might have a top hat lip. If you zoom in, zoom in on this please, Steve. You'll see it has a top lip here. Now again, this has no relevance uh, to a cracked block at all. If water hits the back of this liner, it's still got two options. It will track away down to the bottom or track away up to the top and will hit this lip. Now this lip is not gonna stop the water. It's going to turn through a corner 
and work under the lip and then turn through a corner again and work up to the top therefore puncturing through the head gasket. So having a top hat lined engine has no relevance to whether it's cracked or not and whether it's cured from that crack. The only real cure for a cracked block is to not use a cracked block. The real purpose of a top lip on a liner, you zoom back out now Steve? I have. Is this is machined into the top of the block and then the head sits on top here. So the liner is actually clamped. Now. Um, what can happen, and, and we talk about it quite often, is a slipped liner. So in, in a scenario where this line is in the engine, if for some reason this is released from the block, uh, it will slide up and down with the piston. So that would give a, a ticking noise that's only there from uh, when the engine gets to a certain temperature, because as the alley expands, it would release the liner and cause a tick. Now a top hat liner is designed to stop that from happening, so hence the clamping force between the head and where it's been machined into the block uh, will stop that liner from slipping up and down if for some reason it was to become uh, loose from the actual block there. So that's your three style of liners, a standard, a top hat liner and a ductile liner if the image is still there. Um, and uh, obviously this is the style of liner we use on our cross bolted 4 litre and 4.6 engines. There's, there's, uh, we have to bore out the original liner to check for cracks and there's absolutely no need to go to the extent of a ductile liner. Uh, one little side note as well, a ductile liner might have an adverse effect because it's a harder density of material and, and stronger tensile strength. It may cause issues with uh, piston rings potentially not bedding in correctly and that kind of thing. So hopefully that's uh, helped uh, educate you a little bit on liners. Okay, so what have we covered so far? We've uh, talked about the block and uh, how the casting wasn't as good as it should have been. And we've also covered the different style of liners and why we use the top hat liner. What we haven't covered is the reason they crack. We know where they're going to crack because of the casting not being correct. But the reason they actually crack is A, because the, the casting is too thin, but the, the, the main effect of it is on fuel injected engines. Often fuel uh, tables and ignition tables aren't correct, so it's running extra heat inside the combustion area, which aids the cracking. Um, and also, when you consider the age of the vehicle sometimes and, and lack of maintenance in terms of radiators and coolant flow. So that doesn't necessarily mean water flow through the radiator, but also sometimes radiators have multiple radiators in front of them, such on Range Rovers you have an air conditioning radiator in front of it, which often gets blocked with debris, which means you don't get the airflow through to your coolant radiator, which again adds to uh, extra heat buildup in the block. All of these things added together then gives the cracking problem that we're, we're showing you here. So hopefully this video has been uh, a bit of an enlightenment to you all. Uh, it shows you where the cracks uh, develop, why we will not recondition a cracked block, and uh, the purpose of top hat liners, etc. Obviously if you've got any questions, post them in the comments. You can always follow us on our Facebook page, which is RPIV8 our YouTube channel, which is RPI Engineering, and I believe we've got a Twitter as well, which is RPI Engineering. Thanks for watching.